I am sitting here today with the gorgeous Lynn Haysarman, who runs two amazing blogs called uh, Kaboki and Lady Bloggers Engage. Lynn, talk to us. <laughs> Hi. I'm not sure where to start. <laughs> it's great to be here. Thank you very much for having me. Oh, I'm so happy to have you and I'm so excited to finally be sharing your story with the Inspiring Mompreneurs audience. I think I've, you're included in so many of my posts that I've written, you know, and I've got links to you all over the show, yeah. but, but finally we're actually doing a proper, proper meeting. So this is great. <laughs> fantastic i've had you on my website so it's great to have you on well have me on yours oh yeah so, you've yeah. been amazing to me i just want to tell my audience in case they don't know yet that uh, lynn has been my mentor in the blogging world for the last uh, four years um i joined wealthy affiliate and i discovered lynn and lynn lives in sultana which is just down the road and um, I live in Cape Town, so we, we, we both in, in South Africa. And that was really surprising to join a global community and then find someone <laughs> South African doing amazing stuff. So Lynn kind of took me under her wing. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, you've been so awesome. I mean, virtually everything, almost every cent I've earned. <laughs> could be attributed to you in some way or another. <laughs> well, that's very inspiring. That's, I mean, for me, you know, it's nice to, um, you know, I, I don't think I'm a guru or anything like that. I've just taken the things that I've learned and implemented it on my website. And then a lot of people have asked me, you know, what, what, the, what they should do to earn money. And very often I share that and the people don't take it up. And then they say they can't make money. But, um, Everything I've suggested, you've taken with both hands and you've run with it. You've made it your own and you've earned. So it's really exciting. It's, it makes me very happy. Oh, thanks, Lynn. I know exactly what you mean because I, I just created my first online course. And mm -hmm. the most exciting part for me about creating an online course was when I started to see people actually doing it and going and creating amazing things and seeing what my students had done with it. And it was like... There's nothing more exciting than actually seeing somebody run with something that you've done. It's it's amazing feeling. It's really well, cool. I took your course and I created oh, yeah. my first product. So that was exciting. I haven't made any sales yet, but I haven't been able to. I mean, just where we are right now with everything going on, I've managed to create a few products, but I haven't been able to market it much or get into it, which I'm yeah. a bit disappointed about because I finally got to create my Red Bubble store but I wasn't able to like really get stuck in as much as I'd like to, but yeah. I'll, I'll get there. I think get more back but to normal. You so could have done it on your own. You really didn't need my course. <laughs> Thank you no, for doing I, it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was really excited too, because I actually tried to create my own first product. And what happened was I was not feeling very energetic or healthy at the beginning of this year when I tried it on my own. And um, yeah, I've had some medical problem so it was nice to see your course go live and know that I can just go and have a look and see exactly step by step how to do it you simplified it for me and made it so easy and I think you know while I could have figured it out on my own I think this um this whole thing with online marketing is that there's so much to learn mm -hmm. that it can be so overwhelming and to go and on your own and wade through all the YouTube videos and the tutorials and to go through all, you know, each website has its own way of setting things out, to go and see if you can figure it out on your own every time. I mean, it gets so tiring. It's mm. nice to get it handed to you step by step with videos, exactly click here, do this, do that. Um, I work best watching a video and then following it. So, no, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Oh, that's fantastic. Thank you for that. Sure. Well, enough about me. Let's move into your interview. <laughs> I'm gonna stop before we do for one before we do I yeah. want to let the audience know that I am on my parents' farm. My children are here and there are animals all around. So if there is a bit of mooing in the background, or if my children escape, or if my dad comes wandering past to go out to the field, I am sorry. I don't have any control over this. I've actually removed myself into the garden where I feel that I might be the least disturbed. Okay, 
Well, it looks lovely. I, I love who you are. Oh, no, I love it. It's absolutely beautiful. I wish I was outside now because it just looks so beautiful. <laughs> it's gorgeous. It is stunning. Yeah. Oh, so Lynn, um, what is your secret sauce? What is it that, you know, I've, I've watched you online for quite a while and you just have this amazing way of attracting people to you, of, you know, really figuring stuff out for yourself. You do a lot of that. And then you also do a lot of sharing and caring and showing people how to do things. But there's something that you do that I can't put my finger on. <laughs> that is your secret sauce that it just um, draws people to you. I think it's that you're so authentic, but you tell me in your words, what, what do you think has been your success online? Well, it, it's kind of hard for me to say this is exactly what it is that, um, you know, worked well for me. I can say that, you know, when I first started working online, I was very nervous. When I wrote my first blog post, it was a dog's breakfast. Um, I was scared of writing it. I was scared of putting it out there. I was scared of what people would think of me. Um, there was so much going on. And I came to a point where I decided, you know what, I'm not going to worry about Oh, there's the rip-up behind me. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it in the video. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I came to a stage where I thought, I'm just going to go for this. I'm going to stop worrying about what people are thinking about me. I'm going to stop trying to think. My first blog post, I kept thinking, what do people want to read? How mm. should I write it so that they like it? Mm. And how, you know, what, what topics should I approach? What do they want to hear? And I think, you know, it's when I said to myself, I'm going to stop worrying so much. I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to write what I need to say, which hopefully is what people need to hear, <laughs> you know. Um, but to stop worrying so much about my audience. I mean, yes, you've got mm -hmm. to take the audience into account, but I think you need to be exactly that. You need to be authentic, true to yourself, and share content in a way that fits your personality. And I think that's really important. If you can find mm -hmm. that, then I think mm -hmm. you've kind of found your your mojo, you know? Mm. It's so interesting what you're saying because one of the things I've been frightened of is polarizing myself, you know? That, and I think that that is the only time that people really get successful online is when they are willing to polarize. When they're willing to say, I stand for this, and if you don't stand for that too, don't worry, you don't have to be, you don't have to follow me. <laughs> Go follow someone else. <laughs> So, no, but that's exactly it. Why do you want, you know, I kind of like, I went through a stage where I was very focused on getting as many followers as possible and getting as much traffic as possible to my website and trying to do it in a way that perhaps goes against me and what I stand for. Mm. And the problem with that is that you might get loads of followers um, and then you're going to get people that don't like you. But the people that don't like you are not going to like you. And the people that don't like you perhaps would really like you. But they don't like you because you're being something that's not yourself. What, what's the point? You know, I would rather have a lot less followers and a lot less people liking me and loads of people unsubscribing that I'm being true to myself. Mm. Because then those few, true, few followers are true followers of me. Mm. And I think that it's really important to get that through to some people. Um, and I think also what I do is I don't edit my photos. I mean, I, I sometimes put a little filter on or something, you know, so that if, you, if your photo is really dark, it goes a bit lighter. But I don't edit out my fat bumps. I don't, um, you know, take out half my background and put something else there or change the color of my clothes. Um, take my, I wish I could maybe take some of my zip card, but I don't. Uh, <laughs> but I think people, um, a lot of bloggers completely change you know, you look at a photo and it's not even that person. So what, what is the point in that? Yeah. Yeah. I know if somebody were to meet you today in person, they would know exactly who you are because who you are online is who you are in person. I mean, I've met you a few times and, and you are exactly what I thought you would be <laughs> because it's your personality as well. Yes, I'm glad. I mean, you have a huge personality. And yeah. I think that's also what really, <laughs> really plays out well online because you have such a big personality and like such a, you're such a warm, 
loving uh, being. I mean, you're amazing. You're amazing. (laughs) So, um, okay, let's... You know what I think might actually come to... Uh, You just froze there for a second. You too. You back. Ah, okay. So it's a grouping. I I think maybe what also comes into this, that's something um, that is very uh, personal to me, is my addiction now, my recovery from addiction. And I think what, um, what perhaps also plays a big part for me is that I've spent a lot of time in addiction trashing my life. And I've spent a lot of time in recovery in a treatment center, doing my recovery program, working with lots of addicts as well when I got clean. And it's really important um, as an addict, you hide who you are from yourself and from everybody else. And as you get clean and as you start recovering, you um, start peeling off all the layers of an onion until you really know who you are and being comfortable with who you are and loving yourself. And I think there's a lot of people that are so insecure and they go online and you know, they, they, they're not that authentic because of their fears. So I've learned how to um, be authentic and be okay with being authentic and being real. You know, we do so much crying in, in rehab, you know, <laughs> getting vulnerable. And I think maybe that comes through because I share quite a lot of private personal stuff. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you do. I mean, certainly more than I've been prepared to share online. Um, and, and I do think that is that human aspect, people getting to know you and your struggles and your challenges. Um, people want to know that stuff. Yeah. 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 So, um, Lynn, the video is not coming out great, but it doesn't matter. It's just because I heard everything you said, but you froze the whole time. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so yeah, it is the matter. internet connection of the farm is not that great. But at least the farm yeah. is beautiful. <laughs> yes, it is. It is. I hope when I freeze, I don't freeze in one of those like you know. <laughs> oh that was very good. It was a very good freeze. freeze. <laughs> <laughs> you good, okay, well if it's a good freeze, I'm okay with it. So <laughs> just keep smiling and my freeze, my face. <laughs> Keep and you're free. I'll do that. Perfect. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So let's talk about um, being. Uh, okay. Well, why don't we just talk about what it is right now? You are homeschooling your children. You're away from your husband. Oh. Uh, you know, and you're yes. still trying to keep your blog going. How's that going for you? The juggle is real. And it's getting more and more real every day. Um, You know, I think as a mom that works from home, I don't have a domestic, I don't have a gardener, I don't have any help. Um, Usually I have my kids at school in the morning and I work in the morning. And then in the afternoons, I do homework with my kids and I do my cooking, my cleaning, etc. And then my husband gets home at about seven and then the kids bath and go to bed. So, you know, I've always felt the juggle was real. But it's getting like, it's getting insane now. Um, we are basically being sent, um, okay, I don't know about my daughter's class in grade three, but my son's class, it seems like we're being sent the same amount of work they would do on a normal school day is just being emailed to us to do with our children. So I'm sitting most of the day with my kids doing homework. And then I've got to somehow fit in, you know, like having a poo, having a bath, cooking supper, um, having a cup of coffee and doing my work it's like, it's just huge, you know? Um, yeah, I, mean, I don't even know how to describe it. And I, I'm, I mean, I'm not, I'm not the only one that's struggling with this. There are many parents all over the place. I'm just grateful right now that I'm, my income has dropped because I mean, a lot, not a lot of people are advertising because their businesses are closed, but I am still getting in some work and I'm still able to work, which is fantastic. Uh, so I do consider myself incredibly lucky and I'm very grateful mm. but um, it's been it's been really hard and I think another big thing is that um, up on top of the the struggles of trying to get everything done I am a uh, uh, my son is coming out skulk go go inside and close the door sorry 
I managed to get him back in. Um, you know, I think, I mean, I came off my psychiatric meds last year for the first time in 10 years. Sure. My mood stabilizes. And yeah, I mean, I found like everything so hard. So on top of, you know, all those struggles, I'm not sleeping. My moods are like off the charts. Um, it's been it's been incredibly hard, but you know, I'm just sticking to my my 12 step principles, my recovery program, which is really helping me. And I'm applying all of that stuff. You know, I can only do what I can do. Do your best, leave the rest. Mm -hmm. Staying in the moment. Um, it's taken it's taken a bit of time to put myself out of where I was. I was dissociated for a couple of weeks, like completely dissociated. I you know I was like blotter. But I'm, I'm coming out of that now, and it's, um, it's just made it clear to me how much everybody must be struggling right now. I'm not the only one with mental health difficulties. Yeah, absolutely not. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and I've had the tools and the experience yeah. to try and pull myself out. Mm. And you speaking up about that is going to be so good for people who are going through what you're going through. Because, yeah. 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 Yeah, it's not easy. Yeah. No, I did a live video on that about two weeks ago on my Facebook page, which I put on YouTube and my blog. So, um, yeah, I, I hope that is going to help some of the other mm. parents and, well, I mean, everybody. Um, mm. You know, I've heard so much about, you know, wash your hands, do the social distance. And, I mean, what about where people are here? And, and yeah, it's, it's quite mm. hectic at the moment. Mm. I must put a link to that Facebook Live on in your post then. Yeah. Awesome. I'm just going to give good. myself a reminder here of adding that link. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, there, there'll be a lot of people who could really do with that advice right now. Yeah. Sure. And um, tell me about your blogging strategy. So if you were going to be speaking to other bloggers out there, who are perhaps just starting a blog um, because a lot of people are now turning to online, you know, becoming like work at home moms or looking for online things. What, what would you? Oh, well, um, well, okay. So you're asking me about my blogging strategy and that's, mm -hmm. that's a terrible topic for me. It really absolutely is um, <laughs> because I have, I, I started my online, it was a, my business started off as an online store, um, online baby store. And I started that because I was doing bookkeeping from home. And I thought I could have a baby and just like put it over there and carry on working, which um, that didn't help go according to plan. As I'm sure you, <laughs> of course it didn't go according to plan. And I was very um, newly clean. I, I was only two, three years clean by the time I had my baby. I think it was three years clean. And um, once again, it, was, it came to a stage where i would never had a problem with bookkeeping. It was just something I land in. It brought in some money and I could support myself. But I started hating it because I realized I'd have to send my baby to crash so I can work, so I can pay that money to the crash. And I thought, like, I'm not prepared to do that and I'm not prepared to stop working. But if I have to continue working, it's got to be something that kind of does something to me. And I got it in my head to open an online store, which I went and did. And I didn't know what I was doing. I had no idea. I mean, I tried to research and stuff, but then I got this website built for me and I didn't know how to work it. And then I phoned them up and I'm like, hey, I've got a product. And they're like, well, good luck. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or, you know, like, okay, it'll be a couple of thousand to load this on you. And I'm like, I, like, that's not in my plan. So I had to kind of wing it. And I've been honestly winging it ever since. So I started blogging as a way to draw people to my online store. And then I learned that I don't need to have an online store to make money online. Mm -hmm. And I closed my online store and changed it to a blog. And I don't have a blogging strategy. I mean, my blogging strategy is get up in the morning and I see, has anybody contacted me for a paid job? Um, or I think, well, what should I write about today? Or what's going on for me in my life? You know, mm -hmm. um, the Facebook Live was to do with my mental health during coronavirus. Um, Literally, I just take whatever's going on in my life and whatever I'm feeling and I write about it. Um, in fact, the first year I've been blogging now since and, and working online since 2011. And everyone talks about this content calendar and strategic blogging and your plan and all the stuff. And I went 
And in January, I did a content calendar for the whole year and I had everything planned out. Uh, yeah, and anyway, then we had lockdown and all this stuff happened. My mental health went um, I've also had many medical problems this year. So just before lockdown, I had no energy. I was feeling faint. I was in a lot of pain. Sorry about TMI, but my periods were off the charts. I was just not stopping bleeding. Um, so, I've, yeah, I went to the doctor and I've got an enlarged room and this was causing multiple problems. So I was... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> A sign language. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> Those are my sidekicks. They want to come. So <laughs> it was, you know, I had that first setback in uh, January, February. And then February, March, the coronavirus started hitting. Everyone started panicking about that. And then we had lockdown. And I came to my parents' farm. So now it's like three of us living in this little room, me and my kids. And um, it's getting quite insane. So my content calendar kind of went, maybe I shouldn't plan because it's mm. been going fine for me, winging it all the way. True. It has. But I, I think also, you know, when you first start blogging, though, it's, you need to find your your rhythm. You need to find your own um, way of blogging, your own way of writing, your own way of connecting with your audience. And I just don't feel that before you start a blog, I don't know if it's possible for you actually to come up with a whole content strategy and plan everything down to a T when you actually don't know what it's going to be like blogging and what people are going to connect with. Mm. I find that I, I like to kind of, make sense to I mean I don't just do whatever um I kind of see well what am I doing that's working and oh the people connected with that maybe I should delve into that a bit more um so I kind of I take whatever's going on in my life and I focus on that mm. and whatever comes my way in terms of jobs mm. so it's kind of taken on a, a life of its own I don't sit and plan I literally get up and see okay what's what's hitting me today and what am I going to do okay Okay, so you aren't following that kind of strategy of you have a problem to solve and this is the problem I solve, or is there a problem you solve in your business for people? I just have a general theme that I stick to. I mean, obviously parenting, um, mm -hmm. being a mompreneur, and mental health and addiction. Okay. And whatever fits in there and comes my way, I, I kind of, I go with it. Okay. That makes a lot of Probably sense. Probably not, maybe not the best advice to people, but um, it works for me. Yeah. Well, that's good. It's so nice to hear something that isn't the same advice you hear everywhere. <laughs> no. Because not everybody has the same, you know, way of going about things. I mean, I've been searching for the last yeah. years. What problem do I solve? What problem do I solve? And I can't work out what problem I solve. <laughs> Maybe you spend so much time wondering about that that you don't do anything. Yeah, it's actually extremely freeing to think that I don't have to solve a problem. <laughs> I, I don't I don't I don't know if you necessarily have to. I mean every post that I write is essentially solving a problem. Yes. If there's not one main problem that I focus mm. on. So Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And but yeah. you look, I think I think it's about finding what suits you and being open to it because mm. a lot of people say you need to have such a narrow niche in order to get your traffic. I don't mm. have a narrow niche. In fact, I've got like a almost anything goes niche. Mm. I mean, it's parenting and mompreneur and, and mental health, but I've done gardening. I've done food. I've done recipes. I've done, um, I mean, I've done so much different stuff on my blog. Mm. But it works for me. I, I can't be confined to this little box and just stick mm. to that solving one problem. I'm going to get so bored. And I mean, I, yeah, I mean, how do you come up with new content on the same sort of narrow thing all the time? I can't do that. I need the freedom to do whatever I want when I want. Um, what I can say, though, is that I've tried lots of different stuff. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it hasn't worked. Mm -hmm. So... <laughs> But I think it's about it's about having that um, that confidence to give something a go and see it fall flat on its face and say, okay, so that doesn't work for me. Great, mm. let's try the next thing. Mm. Um, you've got to keep on trying because you know not everything is going to suit your personality. And I think that's where I think a lot of people that start working online 
fall short and then think they've failed and then don't try again because mm. they try something, they follow one specific method and, you know, maybe they try a narrow niche and they're like, oh, God, mm. I can't keep writing content. I can't do this. And then mm. they stop. And I'm like, don't do that. Yes, so a narrow niche doesn't work for you. So mm. try something else. Affiliate mm. marketing doesn't work. Go for influencer marketing. And mm. try different, you know, Facebook isn't going to work for everybody. Maybe Pinterest is your thing. Mm. Or Twitter. I hate Twitter. But maybe Twitter is going to be what connects and resonates with somebody and it fits them. Mm. Um, yeah. So you need to try everything to see what fits and what doesn't. And what doesn't fit, you throw out. What does work, mm. you build on. Okay, and it's as yeah. simple as that. So how many times have you reinvented yourself over the last four years or haven't you, or have you just kind of uh, the same? I don't think I've reinvented myself as such. Um, I think I've spread myself too thin and mm -hmm. then tried to pull myself back from that. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I've got my blog Kaboki and I started another blog called um, Living With Addiction. I started mm -hmm. another one called Small Online Business Opportunity. You've listed two of my websites, but I mean, I've, I've got, mm. I don't know how many I've got, mm. but I shut down a whole stack and I think I spread myself too thin. And I think that was because I was trying to do like a website in this niche, a website in this niche, mm. and it just became, it became too much. Mm. So my main focus is Kaboki and mm. uh, that's my first website and that's where mm. I put most of my energy, that's where my main source of income comes from. Mm. Uh, the blogging um website that you mentioned that is a community for female bloggers to connect to learn and you know a, a resource and a community just for women but I haven't had a lot of time to focus on that which is fine I want to create training and you know really good place for women to learn how to make money online so that's it's coming along but you know I find it's 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 quite tricky when I've had you know I've, every now and then I think hey I've got this you know like at the beginning of this year, I did my content calendar. I'm like, yeah, I got this. <laughs> and then you find out, oh, no, hang on. Actually, maybe you don't. It's kind of similar to you, you know, where you finally yeah. think you've got it. And you're like, you know, I, I've had a lot of setbacks, but I, I think every business had setbacks. Mm. It's about picking yourself up, dusting yourself off, mm. and just getting on with it, getting getting back on the horse. So, mm. yeah, we'll see. I mean, I'm, I'm sure I'll get back into creating my training on that site soon. So and, um, in, in this time, do you feel that you're kind of pivoting because there's been a lot of talk about pivoting at this time? And if you pivot, would it be towards the mental health side? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm only working on Kaboki at the moment. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've got different. Yeah, I mean, I find whatever I'm going through at the time I write about. Mm -hmm. And that's where I go. So if I'm struggling because it's school holidays and I've got the kids at home, you know, I'll write about that and how it's like that yeah. hard and the holidays are too long, etc. And then I'll try and include, you know, ways to help your own mental health, ways to entertain your kids, a bit of activities mm. for your children. You know, I'll mix it up a bit. Relatable um, stuff. Mm. Some nice recipes to make with your children instead of fighting with them all day. Um, so yeah, I mean, whatever I'm going through, I try and fit that into my, my, my work because it works for me. Mm. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. So you really just go with what is happening at this moment, which is being in the present, isn't it? It's just living moment yeah. by moment. That, that is amazing. So you're, you're Eckhart Tull. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely love it. You know, and the thing is also, is if, I, if I have a strict you know, like when things started falling apart this year with the coronavirus and the kids being at home and the schooling and all that, I thought, like, do I try and stick to my content calendar? Mm. Do I try, like, do I torture myself and, you know, beat myself up because I'm not managing to stick with that? And I thought, hell no. I'm, I've just scrapped it. I mean, I've still got it saved. And I thought, well, maybe next year I can tweak it and use it then or something. I don't know. Um, but I'm not going to try and force what's happening now in real life to just, mm. you know, it will be torture. Mm. I noticed at yeah. the beginning um, when you first moved to the farm that you just really just took the time to just be with your children and you were just spending all your time with your children when it was still holidays and everything. And I thought, wow, that is so amazing that you just, you have your priorities so straight, you know? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I kind of do, but it, it actually goes more deeper than that. I didn't really have a choice in the matter. I mean, I suppose you always have a choice, but my mental health took such a knock, I couldn't work. Mm. Mm. And thankfully, with the lockdown, I mean, even my spam stopped. Everything went like shook quiet for three weeks. There was no inquiries. There was no work. There was no... Yeah. And it was fantastic because, like, I was... I think maybe everybody went through the same thing. It was so, like, overpowering. Like, can this really be happening? Um, so I, I was not... You know, when I say that, I was still recovering physically. I'd, I just had an iron drip, I think, the week before. Mm. And I'd been to see the gynecologist, and I'd started new medication to help me with my medical problems. So I was feeling physically um, physically weak. Um, you know, even just walking from here, like half a kilometer, I'd get dizzy and have to sit down. I thought I was going to mm. faint. So that was mm. physical. Um, mm. And then getting dissociated and coming here and having all that mental health and that stress, I didn't really have a choice. I had to just play with my kids because I couldn't work and I couldn't function properly. It was mm. just a fact, you know. Mm. Um, in fact, I might go back it. onto my... Yeah, well, I mean, I've learned that I have to listen to my body. I have to listen to my mind because mm. I'm not in a position to... I'm a recovering alcoholic and addict. If things go wrong, I mean, mm. I could relapse. What, what then? You know, mm. that's pretty bad. I can't imagine um, I would ever to... do that. But I hope not. Um, but it could happen. Mm. So I've learned that I have to listen to my body. I have to listen to my mind and what's going on for me. And when things are getting a bit overwhelming, I just have to pull myself back. Mm. Yeah. I don't really have a choice. I have to do it or, mm. you know, it's sink or swim. Yeah, yeah. And you could have, I suppose, gone back on the on the psych, what did you call them, the drugs that you were on? Um, you could have done that. Yeah, mood stabilizers. I might still do that because mm. I'm not sleeping. Okay. Which is yeah. not, um, not the best scenario for someone having mental health difficulties. You need to eat, mm. sleep, exercise. Those three things have to be like really mm. good. Yeah. Um, and I'm not, I'm not sleeping that great. And it's, you know, it's that combined with the stress of getting all the schoolwork done and getting my work done and money and being apart from my husband, it all, you know, it, it it's not a very good combination. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's, it's never bad to say I need a bit of help. Mm. So yeah. sure. it was hell coming off those meds. I was on them for 10 years sure. and it was really hard going off them. Mm -hmm. And I'm rather resistant to going back on. Mm. But I don't think it will be a complete failure to say, you know, I kind of, I need it. So yeah. that is something that may be happening within the next week or so. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Just, just as a coping mechanism. Yeah. 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 So, um, Lynn, what else would you like to tell us? What is your, do you have a message for the world? Do you have something you'd love the world to know? <laughs> wow. I can't remember what I wrote in my interview questions now. <laughs> Just what comes to well, your think, mind. <laughs> well, I think right now, I think what comes to my mind is just go for it. You know, I think right now, as it stands in the world, how many mothers are sitting at home with their children not being able to put food on their plates, worried hmm. about how they're going to pay for their school fees, how they're going to pay for their house. Um, you know, I... I'm so fortunate because I'm still earning. I'm still able to do everything for my children. I mean, I've got my struggles, but they're not like the struggles other people are facing. Mm. And my husband is still working. Mm. And so I'm very fortunate, but I think there's a lot of people in the world right now that are literally wondering how are they going to survive? How are they going to come out of this? Mm. There are people that are not working, but they might have a job to go back to. There are some people that have just literally lost their business, lost their job the company that they're working for may have closed down mm. and i think you know it may be a good time to spend a bit of time setting up your own business mm. so what would you recommend do? how do they get started well as we both know i think wealthy <laughs> affiliate is the best place to go because it, it provides you with everything step by step you set your business up as you learn they provide you with all the tools the training everything you need uh, the only bummer is, of course, that it does, you do need the premium account. 
but um, you know, nothing's for free. And if you're sitting at home and you do have a little bit of cash left over and you are wondering how you're going to survive this, mm. I would say that you've got the time, you've got the internet. Mm -hmm. So you literally don't really have anything to lose. And yeah. I would advise, you know, if, if you've been thinking about starting an online business and it's something that you, you know, have been playing around with in your mind, now is probably the time to literally just gun for it, go for it. Mm. Mm. And do you have, um, if, if you had to go back and do it all over again, would you do it the same way or would you, do you think there's a faster way to get started or, you know, how long is it going to take somebody to start earning money off their blog? If, oh, the golden question. Yeah, I know. It's a tricky <laughs> one. It's okay, a tricky so one. How long is a piece of string? Um, yeah. Look, I think it's easy for me now to turn back and say, well, I would have done this and this and this mm -hmm. differently. But the fact is, I didn't really know what I was doing. So I, I was figuring it out as I went along. If I had to go back, if I knew then what I knew now, I would mm -hmm. immediately close my online store and I would immediately start a blog and I would implement everything I know on that and I wouldn't have started 10 other blogs. Mm -hmm. I would have just focused on that and I would have yeah. uh, been more confident and put myself out there immediately from the get-go. So, mm. I mean, that's basically what I would have done is I would have had more faith in myself. Mm -hmm. That's a very good yeah. answer. Lovely. And not spread myself too thin. Mm. Yeah, uh, that's definitely been for me. I was also stupid to create three blogs. I mean, why did I do that? <laughs> it's uh, I did about three yeah. one day. Yeah, the best advice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have a few others, but I mean, I don't even talk about those. <laughs> Because <laughs> there's only three that are generating income. But but I would definitely, yeah. yeah, for me, I would have, if I had to go back, one blog. Just make one, just create one and get that one really going and earning. Yeah. And, you know, then you could think about other blogs, maybe. <laughs> but yeah. is that book at the moment about the, the one thing? So many people are talking about this book. I haven't read it yet, but I've had so many people talk about it that I think I know yeah. the book. I mean, the, the, the book is about what the title is. It's that one thing, finding that one thing that you're going to focus on. And I do think that is a path to success. I don't think as women, it's the only way to go because we do like to diversify and we do like to have a lot of, <laughs> a lot of things on the go. <laughs> But, um, oh, sorry, yeah, but I think certainly choosing one blog would have made a big difference to my career. Yeah, definitely. But, mm. You know, it, it's hard to know in the beginning. And the reason why I started another two blogs is mm. because I wanted to, when I joined Wealthy Affiliate, they were saying that this is the way to do it. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to follow their training 100%. Mm. And I didn't want to apply that to my baby, which was Kaboki. Mm. Mm -hmm. I wanted to start a new website and I wanted to learn on that website. And if I make a, an effort, it's on that <laughs> website, not my baby, not my main business. Right. And kind of play around and figure out what I'm doing over there. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, so, like I said, I can't say I would have done something differently because that was wise of me. Mm -hmm. Mm. And I did learn a lot. And then once I'd learned what I'd learned, I'm like, ah, this is how you do it. Right, I'm going back to Kaboki. So I went really quiet on Kaboki for a long time while mm. I was doing my training and my playing around and figuring things out. And mm. then I went and I applied that to Kaboki. So I don't know. I wasn't confident enough to apply what I was learning to my mm. main business. Uh, so, you know, when I say I would have been confident. Mm -hmm. So, but look, those other websites I set up, they're not earning me huge amounts of money because I hardly work on them. I ignore them until I have a job for them. Mm -hmm. But I, I, they're beautiful earn. So they sit there and then someone comes and says, no, I'd like this done or that done. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, cool. Let me just like remember what my login details are and I'll, I'll sort that out quick. So, you know, it's not been a complete loss. Yeah. Yeah, I think nothing is. I mean, if you if if I look back at the last four years of building online, nothing is lost because you every learning curve that you go through is knowledge gained that you're going to use at some point. So, yeah, it it totally is. And also, although some things have been a failure, 
Mm. It's not a complete loss because I've mm. learned don't do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and, I've, and the thing is, some of the risks I've taken learning or trying to implement something, some of them have failed and I know that that is not what I should be doing. But mm -hmm. some of them have flown and taken off. So, mm -hmm. you know, you don't know which way it's going to go until you leap out there and you try it. Mm -hmm. And that, that for me is really exciting. You know, I love that. I mean, I'm sure you felt that with Redbubble. Mm -hmm. You know, you go and you think, okay, I'm going to try this new thing and I'm going to do this. And you put all that work in and then you sit and you wait and you wait and you wait. And you're like, am I going to earn? Am I not going to earn? Is it going to flop? <laughs> is it going to fly? And then you get your first sale. And I mean, it's usually just like a dollar. And you're like, yes, I did it. <laughs> you know? And sometimes yeah. I only make that one dollar from something I've tried. But it doesn't yeah. matter for me. It's that excitement of like, I made money just with my brain, man. You know, oh, and things are implemented online. And for me, that's just like, it's such a kick. I know. Doesn't it give you a kick to think of, if you look at what you've created over these last years, I mean, you have this amazing website, yeah. Boki, with like, how many, I don't know, a million views or something. It's, it's wild. And then No, you, not quite like that. <laughs> okay, but it's a lot. And your 100,000 views, I don't know, it's lots. <laughs> and then your Facebook yeah. page with all those, you know, huge audience. You've got so many followers. And if you look back, none of that was there five years ago. You created all of that. You are the creator of this empire. And yeah, yeah. that is astounding. No, it's, it's, it's quite a sense of achievement, you know. And a lot of people say, oh, where did you go study? I'm like, oh, I did it myself, you know. <laughs> I mean, sure, I did join a wealthy affiliate that, you know, they got the training and I watched YouTube videos. I, I get stuff from all over. Mm -hmm. But it's basically me that sat there on my own at home with my laptop. I haven't gone to college. Well, I did, but I'm not using that stuff. Um, but I'm, it's just all stuff that I've done completely on my own, things that I've learned, things that I've implemented, mm. and also, you know, interesting new things I've tried on my own, you know, ways to try and make money. I've just like thought something up that I wonder if this will work. And yeah. sometimes it has. And it's like, yeah, that's pretty yeah. cool. <laughs> that's I like that. So, and how has it been as a sort of solopreneur doing it on your own? You know, you spoke about doing it on your own. Have you ever wanted to have a partner? Have you ever wanted to, you know, hire people? What, is it lonely? What? No, I like, I, I don't feel lonely. I've got children. They drive me crazy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it's interesting. I used to be a very social person. Um, I also used to be a drug addict. Mm. So. I've had my partying, I've had my socializing, I've had my wild days. I'm very much a home. I like to sit at home. I don't like working with other people as such. Um, you know, I could never go work in the office again and have to rely on someone else to do this or this for me. I like having the control. But I think the one thing that has been hard for me is that I'm not that technically minded. And that has been a challenge for me because I get very frustrated when you know, if, your web, if my website breaks, I'm all on my own. I don't have, you know, I'm, I'm not a millionaire. I don't have a huge amount of income available to go pay this professional to go fix my site. Mm. But also what I find is that people don't do things the way that I want them to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and I find like when I've had problems, I've had to sit there and watch YouTube video after YouTube video. And then I contact someone and they fix that, but they change something else. And, you know, it's, mm. it's been, I find it very irritating and frustrating. Mm. I wish I just had like a magic wand and then that little thing on my website just gets fixed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm striving to implement on my website. You know, I come up with an idea and I'm like, so how do I do that? Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I can figure it out and sometimes it's like keeping my head against a brick wall. Mm -hmm. um, thankfully, I have now come into contact with an amazing woman called Carmen. She's mm -hmm. in Croatia. And yeah. she's like, she's like my tech fairy. And it's amazing because... Um, I connected with her when I started off that uh, blogging community and I started, I created the website and I started implementing the, what I wanted it to be. But of course my skills are not that great when it comes to the tech side. And um, this woman out of nowhere came and said, Oh no, I was going to ask if you wanted me to help you with that, you know? And I'm like, yeah, okay, cool. And she said, no, what, what, what can I do? I said, well, you can, I, I'm just interested in the functionality. I said, you can make pretty, you can add on stuff. I don't care, but these are the base things I want. She went on there and I'm like, every day I woke up, I'm like thinking, mm, it wouldn't be nice if I have this on my website. I open it up and it's there, plus 10 other functions that I had no idea you could even do. Wow. And it's all there. And it's just like, and as, it, 
as I'm doing stuff, it's just changing on its own, you know? Yeah. And she's doing all of that. And so we've kind of partnered up. And, you know, if I'm having a big problem on my website, I just send you an email and say, like, this, this, this. And I just get an email back saying it's sorted. Oh, and I can't wait to employ her. <laughs> it, is such, it is such a relief off of me to have someone. Mm. Well, the thing is, I don't think it's, it's just any tech person that could do this for me. Mm. You know, it, it's the thing is you've got something in your mind and this mm -hmm. is what you want. Mm -hmm. And you try and explain that and convey it to someone and they don't quite get it, but they think they do. And then they implement something and you're like, yeah, that's kind of not, yeah. I mean, it does sort of, yeah, uh, mm. <laughs> you know. So like people will do what you ask them to do, but it's not what yeah. you had, you know. Yeah. She's got this amazing ability. She literally is in my head. Wow. And it's like, it's fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. So yes, you will not go wrong using her. I'm it's so glad. Amazing. I'm so glad you mentioned Carmen because Carmen is the next interview I'll be publishing. <laughs> oh, really? Just trying is to she do a video? She's already set me her, her, um, her interview, her written interview, and I'm waiting to set up a Zoom with her. <laughs> Oh, wow. I'm very excited about that. Um, I'm going to watch that. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to be here. It's so exciting. I mean, I've, I've spoken to her about and stuff, and we've sent WhatsApps, and we've sent, no, not WhatsApps, we've sent, like, Facebook messages and emails and stuff, and she's yeah. created training on the website, so I've heard her voice, yeah. but I haven't actually, like, it would be so nice to have a more, like, one-on-one -on -one I know. It's going to be cool. amazing. Well, I'm still trying to convince her to do the Zoom. Let's put it that way. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm going to be sending a message afterwards telling her I'm waiting for your Zoom. Oh, that'll be <laughs> awesome. That'll be awesome because it'll be so nice if hers comes after yours. It'll be amazing. I mean, we're just about good to go. Yes, yes. <laughs> but I want to have this nice. video in there. <laughs> or even if we do an audio and put in a podcast, it'll also be good, you know? No, no, I want the video. I want to <laughs> tell her. <laughs> I'm gonna tell her, yes, okay. But I think that's another thing that that comes into working online. You know, it, yeah, it can be lonely in a way, but I, mm. I kind of, I don't think it's lonely. I think it's being alone, and I quite like being alone now. Mm. And but on the other side, it's nice to, and this is where I think you and I have connected so nicely, is because you you basically like raved about me, but. I've phoned you before and asked you, how do I do this? Can you help me with that? Or, you know, mm -hmm. can you share something or what? Something, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So it has not been uh, just me giving to you. It's been, it's been mm -hmm. a two way street, you mm -hmm. know? And I think that it's really important to connect with like-minded people, mm -hmm. like-minded business people and to network in that way because it's, it makes it not lonely mm -hmm. and it helps you know, I don't know everything. I can't figure it all out of myself. Mm. It's really nice to have someone that I know has always got my back. I mean, yeah. I know I can phone you and ask you, mm. just do me a social share or do something for me. And I know that you're going to do it. Mm. And this is a very good reason for it, but I'm pretty mm. sure you'll do it. And mm. there's a couple of people that I have that are fantastic like that. Um, there's Ali from For the Kid. I love that mm -hmm. woman. And there's Julie from Parenting Hub and Alison from Mom Diary. Um, mm. You know, and it's it's nice to have this, you know, network of women that are working on similar things that yeah. support each other. And I think that's really important as well. Mm, absolutely. I mean, we live in this world of collaboration now, collaboration over competition. And just, you know, that networking with like-minded individuals has actually completely transformed my business as well. It's yeah, been amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Totally agree with you and everything you've said. And is there anything else you want to tell people? Who, anything oh. you haven't mentioned? I don't know. I mean, uh, uh, the pressure. Um, no, I think. <laughs> this is your time. That I've had, I think I've had enough for today. I've <laughs> schooled two children. I've made a couple of meals. I've done a lot of washing. I've done like. I think I've done enough for today. You're done. Uh, maybe that's the message. Take it easy and don't forget mm -hmm. your self-care and to know when enough is enough. Do what you can. <laughs> <laughs> that would be my message right now. 
<laughs> Thanks, Lynn. As always, you've been absolutely amazing. And I love chatting to you. And I can't wait to upload this to YouTube and embed it in your post. Let's hey. Yeah, well, you must tell me when it's there and give me the link, which I know oh, you will, because you're going to tag me. Of course, of course, of course. I'm going to send you everything. I'm going to send you everything oh, and you get it out there. <laughs> and then I'll add it to my blog and I'll send it out. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. Thank you so much for having me. That's a love. It's so awesome. Bye.